When troubleshooting issues in Kubernetes clusters, one of the main problems is to gather the context. A context is a collection of sources and the tools and the processes and other things that led to a problem. When working with applications in Kubernetes, especially with microservices, there are many moving parts that constitute a context. We have Git repositories, GitOps tools, pipelines, and so on and so forth. There are many things that constitute a context. And without understanding the full context, we might have trouble troubleshooting issues. And that's where Commodore jumps in. Commodore can connect all the moving pieces, gather them together, and provide us a context that we can use to troubleshoot an issue. It is a unified platform of sorts that can help us get a deep understanding of all the events, changes in the system, the tools involved in those changes, and quite a few other things. Unlike many of the previous videos, I will not bother you with some introduction and telling you what can be done and what cannot be done and so on and so forth. I will jump straight into a demo, show you how Commodore works, and while exploring it, I will comment on the good sides and the bad sides, what is amazing, what might not be so good, and what is missing. The first thing you should understand about Commodore is that it is software as a service of sorts. You will have to sign up for the service. There is a free trial, it will not cost you anything, so just go ahead and sign up. Later on, if you think that the product is useful, you might want to subscribe to it and start paying some monthly or yearly fee. And while talking about fees, there is a link in the description for 20% discount. Commodore folks were kind enough to give these perks to all the viewers of this channel. So if you do choose to use it later on, after the trial period expires, use the link from the description. I don't get anything from it, but you get 20% off. And that's a good thing, right? After you sign up and you log in, you will be presented with very uneventful screen that says, hey, there are no services. And that is normal because we are yet to connect Commodore to our Kubernetes cluster. In this case, to my Kubernetes cluster, but in your case, it would be yours, right? So I will skip services and events and notifications for now and go straight into integrations because that's where we tell Commodore what are all the components, all the moving pieces that might be involved in troubleshooting issues. The first and surely most important integration is Kubernetes itself. I need to tell Commodore where my Kubernetes cluster is so that it can start gathering information about the applications running in that cluster. So I will click the Add Cluster button and just follow the flow. There is a wizard that guides me through the process. And that's one of the things that I really like about Commodore. It's very intuitive. I do not need to read documentation. I do not need to spend time trying to figure out things. The UI guides me through all the things that I need. And it does that in a way that it never makes me wonder, hey, what should I do now? What is this for? And so on and so forth. It's really, really, really intuitive. And I love intuitive tools. I love tools that I can start using almost immediately instead of spending eternity trying to figure out how it works, what I should do, what I shouldn't do, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to give it the name of the cluster. It can be the same as the real name of the cluster or any other name that you want, as long as it will uniquely identify that cluster compared to other clusters. And then I'm getting a command that I can execute. This command will install the agent. So let me try just that. But there is a tiny potential problem with that command. If this is not the first time you're setting up the cluster or if you're on a different machine than the first time you set up your cluster, those commands do not contain Helm repo add command, which is required to add the Helm chart to your local list of Helm charts. So if that's your case, go to the link that says documentation and then copy it from there. It says Helm repo add Commodore IO and then the address of the Helm chart repository. Now going back to the wizard, all I have to do is copy and then go to my terminal and paste. Now there is one important thing you have to do. You cannot stay in the terminal 
you need to go back to the wizard and click the next button. I made a mistake. I thought that, hey, after I execute this command, that's about it. Commodore will connect to my cluster. But no, you need to click that next button. Otherwise, Commodore will get confused and so on and so forth. And in that screen, you will see waiting for connection. And eventually, it will be able to connect to the agent running in the cluster. So I'm waiting and waiting. And you are waiting while I'm waiting. And while you're waiting, you might want to click the like button and subscribe button. And if you really, really, really like this channel, you might want to join the channel. It's the price of a coffee that I am drinking right now. And there we go. Cluster Commodore demo was added to Commodore. Excellent. I should be up and running now. This is not all the configuration that I need to do. This is just the first step. From now on, Commodore knows that my cluster exists and it should start showing me some information about it. Nevertheless, I do not care about services just yet. I want to go back to integrations and add a few more. To begin with, I should tell Commodore where my GitHub repository is and allow it to use that repository in read-only mode. It could be GitLab as well, and I think that other Git providers are coming, but GitHub and GitLab are probably what the vast majority of us uses. Is anybody using Atlassian Git something something still? I hope not. Anyways, let me add GitHub integration as well. And it continues being simple. I just need to follow the flow. I will not enable Commodore to use all my GitHub repositories. That will be too much. For this demo, I will limit it to my personal GitHub user or organization, and I will let it use only the repository that I'm using for this demo. In a real world situation, I would give Commodore access to all my repositories, or at least more than one repository. But for now, one repo, is more than enough. That's done, so what else can I do? What else I should integrate with? Let me see, Slack would be a good idea. It would be nice if Commodore can send notifications to my Slack workspace. So let me install that integration as well. And so on and so forth. I will not bother you by showing you how to add different integrations because they're very easy. They're all straightforward. Those few that I added so far should be more than enough to demonstrate how Commodore works. So we'll skip the rest of integrations and move on. Now there is one more thing missing that is not directly related with Commodore. I need to run some application in my Kubernetes cluster so that there is something that Commodore can do. So that there is something that Commodore can discover, advise on, tell me what to do and so on and so forth. So let me install a very simple demo application and then we can see what can Commodore do, how it can help us and in general whether it's worthwhile using. However, I will install that application with a twist. I will not do kubectl apply or helm install and those things. I will push the manifest to a git repository and let Argo CD install the application because later on I want to see how other integrations work, whether I can somehow connect in this case, Argo CD with Commodore, even though there is no official integration for those two. If you're not familiar with Argo CD, first of all, be ashamed. Second, watch the video. The link is in the description because Argo CD is awesome and you should be using it unless you're using Flux, which is equally good. So either of the two should do. So I will copy the application to the apps directory. I already configured Argo CD to watch for that directory and I will push that to the Git repo and then Argo CD will deploy that application and I will have something to play with in Commodore. And you can confirm whether the application is already there or no by going to services, Commodore calls it services, which is a bit misleading because a service in Kubernetes is not the same thing as deployment or stateful set or whatever else Commodore might be watching for. DevOps Toolkit should appear together with the rest of applications that are already running in that cluster. And we can take a look at the information and how Commodore presents an application and what it can do with it. The central portion of the screen, which is arguably the most important one, at least at the very beginning, contains all the events of a service, which again is not a service, but nevertheless, and right now there's not much going on because all I did was to deploy one release of the application. Not much happened so far, 
but I will change that later on. I will introduce some additional events, some will be good ones, others will be bad ones, and so on and so forth. For now, what matters is that all the events are there, and we can see that Commodore detected a service or discovered a service, and it saw that it is a deployment and that it completed successfully. Now, deployment completing successfully is not the same thing as pods of that deployment created through the replica set are all running. And right now they're not running. Zero out of one replicas is currently running in the system, but that should change soon. And it did. The pod is now running, so we can proceed. What do we have here? What's on this screen? We can see some general information about the service, when it was deployed last time, how many replicas, what is the service type, in this case deployment. It's not very fancy, there's nothing really special so far. We can see the pods and the log status, which is similar to what you would get from typical Kubernetes dashboards. There is still nothing special about this. There is a description of the service, of the deployment, there are events and there are logs. We can show multiple services in this view. So if you want to combine one application with another and see the statuses and events that are related to all those applications, you can do that. In other words, you can get an overview about a specific service, about a specific application or a group of applications, depending on what you're really looking for. Now, the real magic happens if you click on the status of a service, the one that currently says completed. So let's do that. Let's see what's the status. What are all the things that we can do related to this service? We can see events just as before. There's nothing special about that one. And then in the Kubernetes section, we can see the diff. We can see the difference between the current release and the release that we had before that one. Since this is the first release, it's not really very useful. So I will get back to that one later when I deploy the second or the third or the fourth release. Next in the line is GitHub integration. But for us to use that integration, we need to add some annotations to the manifest. So let me take a look at how that works. And it's relatively simple and straightforward, even though I'm not very happy how Commodore handles it. We need to provide the URL of the repository. That's kind of cool. That's great. I have nothing against that. But then it requires a reference as well to the commit related to that specific release. And I think that that's not a good idea. Or to be more precise, if I would be deploying my applications through CI CD pipelines, you know, Jenkins or Circle CI or GitHub Actions, then that would be quite okay because in those pipelines, I could modify my manifest every time I want to make a new release, add the commit hash over there, and that would be fine. But I'm not deploying my applications with pipelines. I'm using Argo CD or Flux, and that means that I do not need the reference. It's job of those tools to monitor my Git repository, fetch the latest from the main line or whichever branch I'm using and apply that to the actual state, to what is happening in a cluster. And in this case, Commodore should be able to get that information from Argo CD or Flux itself. It should not force us users to add that annotation because it is additional work that does not make sense to do because A, that information is already added to the manifest, but at runtime, it's added to the resource itself in a Kubernetes cluster. It's just that it is not app com. It is a different annotation, but it is there nevertheless. And on top of that, it doesn't really make sense to do it if you are applying GitOps principles, because again, the tools that are doing the synchronization are doing that for us already, but at runtime, and in a different format. In other words, if you're deploying through CI CD pipelines by executing kubectl apply or Helm install or whatever you're doing, then adding that reference, it's not a big deal. If you're using Argo CD or Flux, it's kind of pointless. That's probably the first thing I don't like about the solution. I think that Commodore should be cleverer and learn how to work with the other tools that are already doing the deployment. So I will ignore GitHub, at least for now, and jump into Slack integration. And here there are different options that we can choose, like whether we want to receive notifications whenever a status of that application changes, or only if it's a successful deployment, or only if it is failed deployment. Choose whichever makes sense for you, 
Personally, I think that we should be notified only of problems, not of good things. Otherwise, there is a risk to start ignoring notifications. But hey, you might have a different logic and Commodore allows you to choose both options. So go ahead, do whatever makes sense for you. The namespace and the service are already pre-populated because in this case, Commodore knows that it is production namespace and the service is DevOps Toolkit. And all that is left is to select the channel where the notifications should be sent. And the last thing we have here is links. Links are extremely useful. Links allow us to connect the tools that do not have out of the box integration with Commodore. And one of the tools that I'm using today is Argo CD. There is no Argo CD integration with Commodore. So I will use links to provide the connection between the two. And all I have to do is really add yet another annotation. So I will go to the repo of my application. I'm just showing you how I did it. And that's by editing a manifest of the deployment and saying, hey, I have some annotations. And that annotation is app.commodore.com slash deploy dot link dot whatever you want. Here can be any name you want and I will use Argo CD. And the value of that annotation is whatever link we want to have, whatever link should lead us from Commodore to some other tool. In this case, a specific page in Argo CD web app that shows all the information about the DevOps Toolkit application. So I will commit and push those changes to the Git repo. And as a result, Argo CD should apply those changes and then Commodore should detect that annotation and figure out that there is a link between Commodore itself and in this case, specific page in Argo CD web UI that describes this application. And while waiting for that to happen, I must say that I like that Commodore is embracing Kubernetes. It is not trying to figure out some special ways to configure stuff. It just expects some annotations and then it evaluates those annotations and figures out what to do with them. And I like that because that is following the standard Kubernetes principles how we should provide additional information about applications and how some other tools should discover that information and use it in whatever ways those tools should use it. Now, if I go back to Commodore, I can see that there's been a new event. There was a new deployment and I can see that the image did not change. What changed is in details, there was a change to an annotation. And that's nice, that's useful. It gives me a very quick way to see what's going on. What happened with this release? Oh, there was no new image, great, but there was a change in rotations, excellent. Now let me take a look at the status of that new deployment and we can see that there are events just as before. In the Kubernetes section, there is a diff that shows the differences between this release and the previous one, which is only in the annotation itself. And I will skip GitHub and Slack for now and jump straight into the links. So if I would like to see more information about that specific release, and that information is in this case in Argo CD, I have a direct link to a specific page in Argo CD and I can just click that link and see what's going on. And since I already set up Slack, I should have received a new notification over there. So let me see whether that really happened, whether there is a message saying something like, hey, there was a new deployment, beware, and stuff like that. And it is indeed there. There is sunshine, meaning that everything is looking great. And it tells me that the deployment of that service was completed successfully. Hooray! Now going back to the Kubernetes diff, I should be able to see the differences between this release and the previous release. And indeed I can. I can see that the new annotation is indeed there, but I can also see manage fields, which I think is an error on Commodore's side. Much of the information that is added to resources at runtime is not really important. And it is just creating noise. Most of the time when I'm looking at diffs, I do not care about managed fields. That's internal Kubernetes stuff that most of the people do not care about unless there is a really good reason to care about them. So maybe Commodore could collapse those and let me expand only if I'm really interested in that because it produces noise. What I really want to see right now is the diff of the desired state not the diff of the actual state that includes Kubernetes internal runtime information. Nevertheless, this is very useful, even if there's more noise than I would like to see.
Now let me spice it up a bit, let me deploy a new release, a couple of new releases. I will start by changing the tag from 270 to 300. That's a new version of the image. And I will push those changes to Git. I will let Argo CD synchronize and then we'll see what Commodore says about it. And if I wait for a few moments until Argo CD synchronizes those two states and go back to Commodore, I can see that there is a new event that this time the image changed. We can see that in summary that says image updated to tag 300, which is useful information that can be digested very easily. And the details stated the changes are applied only to the image. So I really like how Commodore events are digesting changes and showing me what really, really matters. This time diff makes more sense because the runtime information did not change, only the information about the image tag changed. That's nice and useful to see. And the rest is more or less the same. I have events, I should have a notification in Slack, and I have a link that will lead me to the specific page in Argo CD that shows what Argo CD itself did. Now all those were happy circumstances, everything worked great and perfect and so on and so forth, but that's not the main reason why I want to use Commodore. I'm interested in troubleshooting issues. So let me simulate an issue by changing the tag of the image to 9.9.9. .9 I'd never built that image, that tag does not exist and that should result in an issue, that should result in a failed deployment. And I'm going to use that to see what will Commodore think about such a situation? A couple of moments later, I can go back to Commodore and see what happened. And there we are. There is a big blue button that says new events are available, update. I'm going to click that link. It would be even better if Commodore would auto update itself, but hey, that's not a big deal. And there we go. There is a new deployment, but this time it's red. That's a scary color. I can see that the deployment failed. And if I click on the status, I should get additional information and I should be able to troubleshoot what's going on. I can see the reason why that failed. The image was not found because it doesn't exist. I can see the events that say, hey, a deployment started, but then it failed. And there is a diff that shows me what are the changes that were done to the manifest of that application. And I should have received a notification in Slack telling me that the disaster happened. So let me check that out. There we are. It's not sunshine anymore. Now it's explosion. I can see that the deployment failed. I can see a summary of the issue. It failed to resolve the reference, which is Kubernetes way of saying, hey, that image does not exist. Or to be more precise, that tag of that image does not exist. And that Slack message would probably be my first contact with that issue. From there on, I would go to Commodore and do the things that I already did. I would see that there is a failed deployment. I should see the reason for that failed deployment, the events that led to it, the diff of the resource definition, the link to the specific commit if I ever bothered to put the reference as annotation to the manifest, and finally the custom links which lead me to other applications that were involved in producing that problem, that issue, which in my case is only Argo CD. But in a real world situation, I would probably also have linked to pipelines, Jenkins, Circle CI, GitHub Actions, whatever you're using, and all the other tools that were involved in assembling that release that ultimately caused an issue. And that was Commodore in nutshell. There are additional integrations that I did not explore. You can do that yourself. What you will use depend on which tools are involved in the life cycle of your applications. And since it is so simple to add integrations, I will not really waste your time by showing you others. They're all very easy and you can add them yourself. So let's talk about Commodore and I will start with negative things. And there aren't many, there are only two that I discovered so far. To begin with, I do not like the idea of adding references to specific commits as annotations because I think that Commodore should detect that automatically as long as we are using any of the GitOps tools like Argo CD or Flux. If we're using pipelines, then those annotations make a lot of sense. Another potential issue is that Commodore should expand the number of resources that it is considered as services. It works fine with typical ones like deployment, stateful sets, and so on and so forth. But if I use something 
special like k native or maybe open application model or something like that then commodore might get confused but both of those issues are not really important issues because commodore is likely going to continue expanding ultimately it will add the argo cd and flux in its integrations and then probably not force us to add those references as annotations so that should be fixed hopefully very soon. And the same thing goes for other Kubernetes resources. It will probably figure out what to do with, let's say, Knative very soon. So both are very temporary cons that will hopefully disappear very soon. As for pros, I really, really, really like how easy and intuitive it is. I haven't had the need to go to documentation even once. I do not even know whether there is a documentation for Commodore or not because everything is very easy and intuitive. I honestly do not care whether there is or isn't documentation because it's very, very easy. And even in those special cases like format of annotations, there is always a link when you need more information, and when you should go to docs. In any case, it's easy, it's intuitive, and you will hardly ever have to go to docs. The main strength of Commodore is context. It allows us to connect different applications and processes and crunch all that information together and give it to us as a context that we can use when trying to figure out what's going on. Assuming that the number of integrations is going to continue growing, Commodore is a tool worthwhile exploring because no single tool will ever give you all the information that you need. So we need tools like this. We need tools that integrate tools. We need tools that give us overview of other tools and Commodore does just that. It is extremely helpful when trying to troubleshoot what is going on because troubleshooting means going through the whole context of all the tools involved in creating a problem. And that's what Commodore gives us. Try it out and remember that there is a link in the description for 20% discount which you might want to use after your trial expires and assuming that you find Commodore useful in the first place.